We are nearly at the end of October, everyone, and it is looking and feeling like fall down right everywhere here in Salem. Fall colors are everywhere. Halloween is almost here, and perhaps the most telling sign of all, we are firmly into the stretch of college football season. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for tuning in today for game number eight of Willamette Football here in 2023. I'm Jeff Lucero. Happy to be here with you for the live broadcast from McCullough Stadium today. This Northwest Conference matinee game pits the Bearcats against a very familiar conference foe, the Puget Sound Loggers. We'd also like to welcome in any Loggers fans tuning in today. Very nice to have you along for the broadcast as well. We'll talk matchup shortly, but first let's talk about the Bearcats. And they come into today's game still hunting their first league win of the season, having dropped each of their four Northwest Conference matchups so far this year. Most recently up in Newburgh a week ago, falling to George Fox under the lights in Newburgh. The Bearcats opened that game with a very impressive 15-play, 69-yard drive, culminating with a Camden-Dernberger 25-yard field goal to give them an early 3-0 lead. It was a 7-3 ball game heading into the second quarter, but the Bruins scored three times before the break. After a quick stop by the Bearcats' defense to open the second half, Bearcats' tailback Gabe Herrera ripped off a beautiful 56-yard touchdown scamper to pull the Bearcats to within 28-10, to 10, but the Bruins just locked in from there. They scored the game's final five touchdowns to earn their first Northwest Conference victory of the season. A couple of bright spots from that game. How about the effort of the aforementioned Gabe Herrera? He finished the game with 110 yards on just 13 carries, among them that 56-yard romp. He also led the team with five receptions out of the backfield that night, his first five catches of the season. In fact, defensively, Michael Valtiera in Orion Woods combining for 17 tackles against the Bruins. Now, as things stand, the Bearcats now 1-6 and six overall, 0-4 to open league play. But the good news for this program, winnable contests await them the rest of the way forward, starting with today's matchup against the 2-4 and four Loggers. Speaking of, let's shift now over to the Loggers and take a quick look at how their season has gone so far. Part of that 2-4 and four start to their season is a record of 1-3 and three in conference play. Although, like the Bearcats, they've played a non-conference game against a conference opponent. Each of these teams scheduled non-league games against Lewis and Clark this year. This is the 86th all-time matchup between these two programs. Overall, the Bearcats lead the Loggers 47-32 to with six ties mixed in as well. Uh, the Bearcats last defeated UPS in 2021, although that was another of those scheduled non-league games against a league opponent. The last time Willamette knocked off the Loggers in conference action came back in 2016 up in Tacoma by a score of 63-24. to 24. Loggers set to kick off. Left to right. Squib kick. Muffed for a moment by the Bearcats, but quickly covered up at their own 37-yard line. We are underway here in Salem under beautiful, very clear blue skies. It is a crisp and cool autumnal afternoon here in Salem. But it is... Make no doubt about it, a beautiful, just picturesque day here at McCullough Stadium. The Bearcats will open the drive. We've got a change at quarterback. That's one of the big storylines today for the Bearcats. Their third starting quarterback so far of the season. We're getting our first look at Alex Rivera. Not our first look necessarily. He has seen game action before, but this is his first start. Takes this shotgun snap, three-step drop, slides to his left, looks deep downfield, has a man and connects very quickly right out of the chute. That is Tyler Epifanio coming down with that pass. And quickly on the first play of the game, the Bearcats flip the field. They are in business all the way down at the Loggers 25 yard line. Gain of 37 yards on first down. First down handoff into the hands of Cahill Hooper. Maybe a couple straight up the gut. So again, a little bit of an unknown commodity. Alex Rivera, 5'9 freshman from Levine, Arizona, gets his first start. Talked to one of his former teammates in the press box before the game to get a little bit more intel on the guy. Good arm strength on that one. Rips it across the middle. A little behind the intended receiver. So now third and eight here for the Bearcats on the game's opening drive. Just underway, a couple of other games just kicked off around the league. We'll get to those scores here throughout the broadcast this afternoon. 
On third down, Rivera dumps it off underneath. Had a man for a moment, but it falls incomplete. Outside, the number's intended for Hooper. And here on fourth down, it looks like the Bearcats will elect to keep the offense on the field. They face a fourth and eight here at the Loggers 23. Will be a 40-yard field goal attempt from here. Instead, it's Rivera and the Bearcats offense on the field. Three wideouts to the far side, one to the near side. That's Justin Genovia at the bottom of the formation. That pass didn't have much of a chance intended on the perimeter for Brandon Johnson. And the Bearcats will turn it over on downs. But Alex Rivera looking very confident, very poised on his first series as a starting quarterback for the Bearcats. That opening pass to Epifanio did flip the field. But then we will get our first look at Mason Binning and the Puget Sound offense. They will spread things out right away. Five wides. Now one of the motions back into the backfield. And Binning will dump it off to him. That's John John Nelson. Have some space in space. And he will travel to about the 42-yard line. Make that the 37, excuse me. So gain of 14 yards. We'll move the change for the Loggers. Loggers a very pass-heavy team. Mason Bidding completing 59% of his passes so far on the season. 156 completions, 265 attempts, 1,635 yards, 11 touchdowns, 8 picks. Nine of those touchdowns going to Isaiah Jarens. We have not yet talked about him, but we will, and probably a lot throughout this broadcast. Not just an all-conference performer, but perhaps all-American. Chase down in the backfield, however. Benning goes down for a massive loss. I believe that was Trevor Goldman getting to him. He's a local kid. Right here in Salem, played at South. And he just would not give up on that play. Running, bending down from behind. And it is second and 21 here for the Loggers. All the way back now at their own 26. Trips formation down at the bottom here. Benning rolls to his right, past the line of scrimmage, and the take off. Works his way back toward the middle of the field and is dropped at about the 35. So it'll still be third and long for the Loggers. Logger starter across the front, Josiah Jordan Wyatt Goad. Caleb Puapuaga, Taylor Reese, and Daniel Wani. Loggers break the huddle. Henry Hernandez, the single setback, stands to the left of quarterback Mason Binning. Binning takes the snap, drops back, surveys, slides to his right. Now tucks and goes. He'll be brought down well short of the line to gain. So the Bearcats defense stiffens on the Loggers opening drive. We'll see what the Loggers choose to do here. It will be fourth and about seven here. Well, it looks like Binning and the Loggers offense will remain on the field. Binning hobbling a little bit. He does not look right. He is favoring an ankle. From the 41. Fourth and six for the Loggers. Quick pass out into the flat. They find Tommy Milton. 6'5", junior tight end, and not only does he get the first down, he's into Bearcats territory, and the Loggers on fourth and six, able to convert. Go, 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 go. 
So from the 49 of the Bearcats, Mason Binning. Three wides to his right, two to his left. Empty backfield. Flag on the play behind the play. That pass complete to Isaiah Jarens, the six-foot junior from Lacey, Washington. Played for James Jones up at Timberline High School. Let's check the marker. Lying in the loggers' backfield. It was thrown right at the snap, which may indicate an illegal formation, but I'm, all, I'm out of the business of presuming to know what the call on the field is going to be. I'm over everything this year. Legal substitution on the offense. It's going to be a five yard penalty for the spot. Remains first down. We'll wipe off the first reception of the game for Isaiah Jarenz on the illegal formation, which will back the ball back into Loggers territory. So, first and 15 upcoming. Let's talk about Jarenz for just a moment. 61 catches, 782 yards, and nine touchdowns coming into this game. He is second in the nation in receptions per game with 10.2, one of only two receivers in the nation, in fact, averaging at least 10 catches per contest. He's actually averaging 14 per, per game over his last three. Handoff on first and 15 goes utterly nowhere. Henry Hernandez dropped very quickly for no gain. Bearcats blew that play up. It did not have a chance. Second and 15 now for Binning and the Logger offense. Three down linemen for the Bearcats. Pass to the near side. Jostled out of bounds was John John Nelson, the slot receiver for the Loggers. Moves the ball back into Bearcats territory. It will be third and manageable for the Loggers after a gain of eight. So third and seven upcoming for the Loggers. Ball rests at the near side hash on the Bearcats 46 yard line. Bidding from the shotgun. Henry Hernandez stands to his right. They hand it off for Hernandez. He stood up after a gain of two, maybe three. It's very likely four down territory for the Loggers. It'll be fourth in about four. Yep, from the 43. And indeed, the offense will stay on the field. The Loggers have already converted one fourth down on this drive. Jarenz isolated at the top of the formation. Motioning across is John John Nelson. He's well out wide. Binning looks right now, scrambles left, has no one open, able to find Isaiah Jarenz coming back to the ball, and Jarenz just barely. In front of the sticks, he will move the chains, and it's the second fourth down conversion on the first touch of the game for the Loggers. So nice job of Jarenz keeping the play alive for Benning. Benning moves well. His rushing totals <laughs> sort of belie how active and able to move with the football Benning is. 53 carries. Only 80 yards credited. Of course, you have to factor in the sack numbers. On first down, dumps it off. It's John John Nelson. He's wrestled down at about the 36. I'll actually mark him down at the Bearcats 35. So just a gain of a couple on first down. Coming into this contest, John John Nelson, the slot receiver, number 16 for the Loggers, 
and Isaiah Jarenza combined for exactly 100 catches on the season. Denning takes the snap, hands it off to Hernandez. Initial contact. Hernandez fights through the hand tackle. And is brought down across the 30. They will mark him down right at the 30, in fact. So third and short now for the loggers. Hernandez remains on the field in the backfield alongside Mason Binning. Split out to the near side now, Isaiah Jarenz. Three wides to the far side of the formation. Binning drops, looks downfield, wants Jarenz in the back of the end zone. Did he get a foot down? He did. Touchdown, Loggers. Penalty marker might wipe it off the board, hold everything. It's lying on the field here. Just inside the numbers at the 30. Referees getting together to talk things over. Holding. 51 of the offense. Wipe off Jay the Hunter touchdown Hunter. as holding Third is down. the call. On Puget Sound. That will move them back now to the Bearcats 40 yard line. Set up here on the near side hash. So no touchdown for Isaiah Jarenz on the pass. Floated very nicely by Binning. Timed it just right. It's all for not third and 13 now. Huge play here for the Bearcat defense. Binning looking left, has man underneath, pass a little bit behind it, the intended receiver. Still had an opportunity to reel it in, did John John Nelson. It was gonna be well short of the line to gain. And on fourth and 13, at least for the moment anyway, Head coach Jeff Thomas of the Loggers electing to keep the offense on the field. It is fourth and 13. Loggers have to get to the Bearcats 27 to convert. Fourth and very long. Binning and Hernandez in the backfield. Snap is away. Binning looks left, has a man streaking free. It's John John Nelson, and he has enough for another Loggers first down. On fourth and 13, the loggers able to convert. So from the Bearcat 24, the loggers with a fresh set of downs to mess around with. Here on the near side is John John Nelson and Jake Eller Dewey. Hernandez in the backfield. Tommy Milton, the tight end on the field for the Loggers. Quick pass near the near side flat for Nelson. Angled out of bounds, just shy of the 15. Actually, they'll mark him out at the 17. So a short gain of seven. This is the first red zone play for either team. Bearcats opening drive stalled at the Loggers 23 yard line. Bidding now on second and three. Hernandez stays on the field as a lone setback. Nelson motions out. They'll bubble it out for Jarenz. Has a couple of blockers. Works his way inside the 10. Spins off of a tackle and is finally wrestled down. Pinballing his way near the goal line. He's tripped up at the five, so it'll be first and goal for Puget Sound. Five yards away from Paydirt. Scoreless so far. About four and a half minutes left here in the first quarter. Hey, 
Everybody bunched in tight around the ball near the line of scrimmage. Binning under center for the first time today. Bumps into a running back. Puts a ball up for grabs in the end zone. That ball hung in the air for an hour and a half. Intended for Jarenz at about the same spot where he had reeled in the touchdown. That was called back by the holding penalty. All kinds of miscommunication in the loggers' backfield there. Benning remains under center for second and goal from the Bearcats five. Two setbacks, offset formation. Nothing doing on the inside give. So third and goal coming up for Peter Sound. Binning under center again. Quick drop, floats a pass toward Isaiah Jarens, but it leads him out the back of the end zone, off his hands. So just a little bit too much air under that one. Jarens with not much of a chance. And now what do the loggers want to do? From the four yard line, it's fourth and goal. And wow, the Loggers for the fourth time on their opening possession of the contest, elect to go for it again on fourth down. Bending from the shotgun this time. Hernandez to his left, three wides to the right side, one at the top of the formation. Milton motions in, open for a moment. Now firing a pass to a wide open Isaiah Jarens in the back of the end zone. And on fourth and goal from the Bearcats four yard line. Jarens now his 10th touchdown of the season. On to attempt the point after try, Jordi De La Torre, a perfect 13 of 13 on the season on extra points. And it's no good. Bearcats might have gotten a piece of that. It came off the foot awfully funny right there. Bearcats with a promising drive. It stalled deep in Loggers territory. Loggers come right back with a very long methodical drive, converting four fourth downs in the process. They take an early 7-0 lead. We'll be right back. How do I come out of this? I don't want to. Do I just a 19 play, 77 yard drive for the Loggers results in six points. De La Torre's kick, a short one fielded at the Bearcats 22 yard line. Nice return for Elijah Romero. It'll be excellent opening field position. Well, the Bearcats on their second drive of the contest. A 22-yard return for Romero. And we'll get our second look now at Alex Rivera. In the third different starting quarterback so far this season for the Bearcats, very untested. Young man, but he looked very, very good, very poised. Saw some good arm strength from him on the game's opening drive. Play fake here on first down. Dumps it off across the middle, has a man. 
Justin Genovia muscles up. Blasts his way through a tackle, forced out of bounds, but not before a gain of 21 yards all the way down to the loggers, 36. Rivera takes the snap, another play fake. Wants it all, looking for Epifanio, a little bit of hand fighting. But Tyler Evers, very talented sophomore cornerback in coverage. Matching Epifanio step for step down the near side sideline. Second and 10 now for the Bearcats at the Loggers 36 from the near side hash. Split backs with Rivera. Hand off, Gabe Herrera. Massive week for Herrera last week. 13 carries, 110 yards on the ground, including a 56 yard burner to the house against the Bruins up in Newburgh. Also led the team of five catches last week. Those were his first five receptions of the season, and he was the team's leading receiver last week. Lost a yard there, so it's third and long now for the Bearcats. Rivera snowed under, dropped in the backfield. That is Asher Matsui getting to him. Blitzing off the right side of the formation. And it's fourth and 20 now for the Bearcats, and they will bring George Wiles Kohler and the punt unit onto the field. Wiles Kohler already with eight kicks inside the 20 on the season. We'll look to add to that total here and pin the loggers back, hopefully near their own goal line. Kick is away. Moving up to field it. it was Dylan Graham. I understand Jason Barber, their normal punt returner, a late scratch today. If I'm not mistaken, I did see him walking around on the logger sideline in street clothes. If I'm not mistaken, regular kick and punt returner for this logger special teams unit. Jason Barber inactive for this contest. In any event, it's Mason Binning and the Loggers offense back on the field for drive number two. 19 plays, 77 yards on that opening touchdown drive. Binning, 6'2", junior from Bellingham, Washington, up near the Canadian border. Drops it off for Jarenz. He's tripped up and knocked out of bounds. Just shy of the 40. Mark him out at the 39. It's a gain of eight. Second and two upcoming for the Loggers. Both of these teams are a little dinged up, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. We'll try to get you some injury updates here. Bearcats playing without several players today. No Michael Wong. No Rive Raj. A couple other guys that they have been without for parts of the season. Give is to Henry Hernandez, the junior tailback, and he's brought down at just about the line of scrimmage. Might have picked up a yard. He did. He scratches out a one-yard gain, and it's third and one now for the Loggers on the other side of this break. We have reached the end of the first quarter. The Loggers were the only points on the board. They lead it six to nothing. Second quarter action coming up on the other side of this break.
end up here now on the near side hash. Now moving right to left across your radio dial. Getting from the shotgun awaits the third and one snap. Motioning in. John John Nelson, all kinds of moves. Inside handoff, Henry Hernandez has the first down and a lot more. Spills his way over the 45. Finally wrestled down at about the 46, maybe the 47. They will in fact give him forward progress out to the 47 yard line. So on third and one, the logger is able to convert and keep the drive alive. Three yards shy of midfield. Vince Becerra getting a start here. Up front for this Bearcats defense. Alongside Michael Moreno, Michael Valtierra, and A.J. Conrad. On first down, Benning looks to pass. Pump fake one way, now slides to his right. Scrambling out, trying to throw his man open. A tough pass, and it's broken up at the perfect time. Intended receiver of John John Nelson. He was met squarely in the back near the sideline. Not sure whether that was going to be a completed pass or not, but great job of closing things out by the Bearcats defense. And it's second and 10 now for Puget Sound at their own 47. Benning empty backfield this time. Two wide to the near side, three up top. Throw to the flat for Jarenz. Waits for his blockers, able to step through a couple would be tacklers. Mosey's out of bounds in Bearcats territory. And picks up with Logger's first down in the process. Some nifty footwork from Jarenz, nets the Loggers. Fresh set of downs now in Bearcats territory. Lamb at 43. Empty backfield again this time. It's three wides to the near side, two up top. Binning, stationary in the backfield. Fires across the middle underneath. It's Isaiah Jarenz again. Knocked out of bounds. This time by Dom Corrado. Good to have Dom Corrado back in the secondary for the Bearcats. He's been. And very quickly. Sound back to the line of scrimmage on first and 10 from the Bearcats 26. Pinning looks left, now looks right. There's a lot of space in front of him inside the 20 to the 15. And a good tackle in space. And it's Caden Webb closing in on Pinning. And the Loggers will once again play with some pace. Quick pass to Jarenz. Works his way into the end zone. And Jarenz already with his second touchdown of the day. That's touchdown number 11 on the season for Isaiah Jarenz. And the Loggers now lead it 12 to nothing. So the Loggers picked up the pace on those last three or four plays. Kind of had the Bearcats defense on its heels reeling just enough. And the Loggers will go for two. To try to make it a 14 to nothing contest. John John Nelson with some more fancy moves as he motions free and is wide open. Inside the pylon, on the two point conversion is converted. Now the Loggers 14 and the Bearcats nothing. 12.56 to play here in the first half. We'll be right back.
Kickoff is away, fielded by the Bearcats, knocked out of bounds. Moving left to right across the field, coming into your living room, it's Elijah Romero once again. The Bearcats will once again begin the drive with very favorable field position. They are set up here on the near side hash at their own 42 yard line. Let's see what Alex Rivera can do with his third touch of the game. Single setback is Cahill Hooper. Pistol formation, that pass broken up nicely. Intended across the middle for Epifanio. But reaching up and knocking it down was Dylan Graham. Did a great job of snuffing that play out. Epifanio had Lots of room in front of him. Had it not been for Dylan Graham swatting that pass out of the sky. Beautiful day here in Salem. Alex Rivera on second and 10. Takes the snap. Forced to scramble, throws downfield. Pass intended for Brandon Johnson here on the near side boundary. Rivera doing a nice job using his feet to keep the play alive. So third and 10 now for the Bearcats. At their own 42. Three wides at the top of the formation. Genovia split out here to the near side. Stands at the numbers on the 40. Low snap, Rivera handles it. Pass downfield intended for Genovia. But it is just out of reach. And the Bearcats will be forced to punt for the second time in three possessions here today. So a quick three and out for the Bearcats. They were not able to... Anything going on that drive. Ball rests where it did when the drive began. The snap was mishandled. The punt is blocked in return for another Loggers touchdown. Miles Kohler had that snap just go right through his hands and was able to recover it. Got a kick away, but it was blocked and returned. It was either Stephen Anaya or Hayden Teeter taking it back for the Loggers touchdown. You now lead it 20 to nothing in the early stages here of the second quarter. And the Loggers once again will go for two. Bunch formation to the right side. Now Nelson in motion. Benning ducks, scrambles. He found John John Nelson. But Nelson had a foot out of bounds apparently. Two-point conversion, no good. 20 to nothing, our score.
20 to nothing our score, 12.22 left here in the first half. Lager is getting it done on special teams. Steven Anaya with a 25 yard return after the block punt. A commanding 20 to nothing lead. Speaking of commanding leads, Linfield leading Pacific 23 to nothing in McMinnville. Jarek Little with a very promising return for the lock for the Bearcats. Excuse me. So once again, the Bearcats will start the drive across their own 40. On their 42. This is exactly where they had the ball a moment ago. A quick three and out led to that block punt return for a touchdown. And here comes Alex Rivera and the Bearcat offense on first down. Rivera wants to pass. Instead, he's hauled down in the backfield. Gunner Jorgensen, first man to him. His second sack of the season. It fell apart very quickly. Just power inside move from Jorgensen. Fights through the block, sheds the blocker. A nine yard loss on that sack. Second and 19 for Rivera. Three wide outs here to the near side. Shaking the first tackle, Brandon Johnson makes a move at midfield. And he's brought down near the first down marker. He might have enough to move the chains, and he does. So Rivera gets that pass out very quickly here on the near side. And Brandon Johnson making some moves on his way into Lager's territory. And a couple of men miss. Spins his way down. The Loggers 47 yard line. Excellent effort on that connection to Johnson. Rivera straight ahead. Ball is knocked out, but they might have knocked him down. I heard whistles blow. And they are, in fact, going to say that before the ball came out, forward progress had been thwarted. So it's a gain of three for the Bearcats. Second and seven now at the Loggers 44 here on the near side of the field. Genovia isolated. Hand off to Steven Wright, fights his way toward the 40 yard line where he's brought down by a host of Logger defenders. Steven Wright bullying his way forward for four. It's third and a very manageable three yards for the Bearcats. Rivera, pistol formation. Steven Wright stays on the field. The lone setback stands directly behind Rivera on third and three. Blitz coming from the loggers. Rivera gets it away quickly. Has a man and completes it. What a throw. And the Bearcats into the red zone for the first time in this game. Tyler Epifanio reels in that pass from Rivera. We've got a penalty marker, however, in the backfield. And it looks like we're a foul. personal foul roughing the, roughing the passer the call the against the logger. So half the distance added to the end of the play. Half the distance added to the end of the play. So the Bearcats very much in business. But let's go back to that throw from Alex Rivera. Got it out very quickly and put it on a dime underneath Tyler Epifanio. Pitch and catch, and it's first and goal for the Bearcats. Right on the field, takes the handoff. Works his way over the right guard. Was felled in the backfield for a, maybe a gain of one. 
if that. Marker doesn't move, so no gain on the play. Second and goal for the Bearcats. Ball resting on the hash mark at the seven yard line. Rivera looking right, has a man angling his way toward the end zone, dragging a tackler with him and scoring the touchdown. I believe it's Trajan Clark. And that is Trajan Clark's first pass reception of the season, and it goes for six points. The six-foot sophomore from Davis, California, with his first catch of the year. And he pays it off in a big, big way. Point after try is good. And the Bearcats with a very impressive 58-yard drive. They're back in this game. It's 20 to 7. We'll be right back. play 58 yard drive for the Bearcats culminating with the first catch of Trajan Clark's collegiate career results in six points for the Bearcats they now trail 20 to 7 kickoff is away and it's a good one my goodness Dylan Graham wildly underestimating the leg of Camden Dernberger that ball carries all the way to the goal line and through the end zone for a touchback. So it'll be first and 10 for Puget Sound at their own 25. Now your screen says 20 to nothing, but the score is 20 to seven. On first down, it's Isaiah Jarens with catch number seven already in this game. Dragging. Tacklers across the 30. Brought down after a gain of six. Second and a short four. Ball rests between the 31 and the 32. Bidding with an empty backfield. Three wides to the near side, two at the top of the formation. Bearcats in that base, 3 4 defense. Bidding, surveying, buying some time, scrambles to his right, has a man. Picks up the first down, big lick out there from La Alike. Team leading 41 tackles, that's good for seventh in the conference coming into today's conference, coming into today's contest. Fresh to the downs for the loggers, they're on 37, another empty backfield. Awaits Mason Binnick, takes the snap, short drop. Fires underneath, it's Jarens, catch number eight. He's across midfield. Knocked out of bounds inside the 45. Mark him out of the 43 of the Bearcats. And Isaiah Jarens just piling up numbers once again. Already eight catches in this game. Already very close to his season average of 10.2 receptions per game. And there's still a ton of time left here. In the first half, another empty backfield for Benning. Looks right, now left, takes the snap. That one intended for Nelson, it's taken off the turf, he turned up field. <laughs> I 
<laughs> you want to get a ball? Okay. Back in the day when I was playing football with my buddies when we were little kids, we made up a rule that if you pass. caught the ball off the turf, you could yell out the word Canadian before you grabbed the ball off of bounds and you could still, the ball was still a live ball. I was immediately reminded of that as John John Nelson headed up field after taking the ball off the turf. Jaren's in motion on second down and 10. Binning nearly stumbles over his own feet at midfield and now we'll just Walk the ball out of bounds. He'll lose a couple on that play. It'll be third and long for the Loggers upcoming. So they'll mark him out of the 44, so a loss of one, but it's still third and 11 here for Puget Sound. Clock will run. We're moving down toward the seven minute mark of the first half. Third and a long 11 yards. Tommy Milton at the top of the formation. Five wides again, another empty backfield for Mason Binning. And the Loggers takes the snap. Deep drop, fires well downfield, has a man down there, but the pass well short of Jarenz this time. Not even Isaiah Jarenz able to do anything with that pass. And on fourth and 11, Mason Binning walking toward the sideline. But in fact, the Puget Sound offense will once again remain on the field. So on fourth and 11. The setback is Nick Fernandez. Binning bobbles the snap, running for his life. Airs a pass downfield, but I believe out of bounds. No, they're saying he caught it. That is John John Nelson, who actually had lined up in the backfield. Everything fell apart for the loggers until it didn't. Mason Benning drops the snap. Wound up all the way back in his own territory and was still able to complete the pass to Nelson. Here's Jarenz, catch number nine inside the 20, hauled down to the 15. They'll actually mark him down at the 16. Jarenz took his hat off. He's allowed to stay on the field. Lines up in the slot to the right of Mason Binning. Binning looks his way, now fires into the end zone, has a man wide open. That is Liam Smith scampering free. Touchdown loggers, 17. Ten yard penalty, replay point after touchdown.
holding number 71 of the offense. The penalty is declined. The results of the try is no good. Pass incomplete. Genovia, the intended receiver. Third down and ten. First and ten for the loggers at the Puget Sound 28 yard line.
Finnick's pass complete. Caden Webb with the tackle behind the line of scrimmage for the Bearcats. Loss of four on the play, second down and 14 for the Loggers. Finnick's pass complete to Jarrett. Raymond Passe with the stop for the Bearcats. At the Puget Sound 27 yard line. Third down and 11 yards to go. Single setback to left. They set up the screen, but it goes in and out of the hands of Henry Hernandez. Binnings pass incomplete to Hernandez. Hernandez had it, took his eye off it. He did the same thing. He tried to pick it off the that turf. That brings up fourth down. field with it. So fourth and 11 for the Loggers. They line up to punt for the first time today. is that punting for Puget Sound. That is not Jordi De La Torre. Punt is down at midfield. It'll be first and 10 for the Bearcats at the 50 yard line. At any rate, short punt. And the Bearcats with a very short field to work with, with 354 left here in the first half. Excellent job of the Bearcats defense forcing that three and out. And the very short punt. Not quite sure what happened there. A little miscommunication at the line of scrimmage. It might have just been failure to launch <laughs> as everybody else in the Bearcats start. took out, but the ball had Number yet to be Number 56 on the so. offense. Five yard penalty, first down. The old false start on everyone but the center. <laughs> so first and 15 now for the Bearcats at their own 45-yard line. Ball rests right near the left claw of the Bearcat logo on the field. Rivera takes the snap. Looks like that play might have been a designed run for him, but everything closed up very quickly, and he's throttled down for a short loss. Rivera so brought down back for a loss on the play. Four yards short of the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be second and 19 now for the Bearcats. Clock continues second to run. Three and a half minutes left here in the first half. Puget Sound leads 26 to 7. Three touchdowns from Mason Binning. A special teams touchdown after a blocked punt. Return for a touchdown. So the Bearcats touchdown coming off a very impressive drive. Rivera bobbles the snap, picks it up, throws downfield. Whistles blow. Well, I guess they rule the play dead after Rivera picked the ball up off the turf. So take the pass attempt off the board. It's another big loss for the Bearcats, and they face a third and very long. Call it third and 24 now. Rivera, deep drop. Looking downfield, now moving to his right. Tucks and goes. He's out near midfield. He is getting close to the sticks. Did Alex Rivera on third and 24 pick up a first down? He very may well have. They'll actually mark him a yard shy. What an effort on third and 24. Alex Rivera takes off with it, crosses midfield, and has dropped a yard short of the line to gain. Fourth and one upcoming after the 23 yard romp from quarterback Alex Rivera. What do the Bearcats call on fourth and one? 
Two setbacks. Stephen Wright takes the handoff. Has the first down and a couple of more. Great effort from Stephen Wright. Buried at the bottom of the depth chart at the beginning of the season. Stephen Wright has earned his way back toward the top. Seeing more and more snaps, more and more carries. He stays on the field along with Jarek Little in the backfield. Alex Rivera takes the snap, drops back to the 45, fires a pass to a man. It's Epifanio, and that one broken up. Once again, who else could it be? It's Tyler Evers. Evers came into this game with seven passes broken up. That was good for third in the Northwest Conference. And he's broken up a couple more here so far today. So second and 10 now for the Bearcats. Clock stopped with a minute and 20 showing here in the first half. Again, two setbacks, three wides. Blitz coming, and they get to him and drop him at midfield. UPS brought the house. And they deliver a sack all the way back close to midfield. They'll actually mark him down. Forward progress will actually leave. Timeout. Puget Sound. Alex this is their Rivera first charge timeout of the half. Back at the 45-yard line. The loggers will use their first timeout of the half. We'll take it with them. We'll be right back. Face a third and 18 at the Loggers 45 yard line. So, with Jarek Little and Stephen Wright in the backfield, on either side of him, Alex Rivera awaits the shotgun snap. Now, Little motions out. They set up the screen. Was actually Gabe Herrera trying to reel in the screen. Not Steven Wright, excuse me. But it was read well by the loggers. They did not have much of a chance. So it looked to me like maybe Willamette was just trying to get a chunk back and they were perhaps going to have a decision to make depending on how that play worked out. But on fourth and 18, the decision's very simple. They will punt it away. As Dylan Graham stands back at his own 10 yard line, waiting for the Wilds Kohler punt. Good snap, good kick, and a fair catch called for and made at the 10 yard line. So Wiles Kohler does a nice job pinning the loggers deep in their own territory. They've got two timeouts and 59 seconds to work with before the halftime break. Mason Binning, already with 202 yards passing and three touchdowns in this contest. Once again, we'll line up with an empty backfield, five wides on the field. John John Nelson motions into the backfield. Binning looking across the middle. That pass in and out of the hands of Liam Smith. He got the third of three touchdowns so far in this game, but he couldn't reel that pass in. Clock stops with 54 seconds showing. Loggers, a very long field in front of them. Second and 10 at their own 10. Three wides to the near side. Once again, it's Nelson motioning into the backfield. He is the safety valve here. Binning able to escape trouble. Now does dump it off for Nelson. 
Catches the pass and is knocked out of bounds at about the 23, maybe the 24, and they will mark him out of the 24. Clock will stop with 45 seconds. 14-yard gain, so a fresh set of downs for Puget Sound. They'll bring fresh personnel onto the field, making his way off. The starting tailback, Henry Hernandez. Back on is Dominic Paris. Wide out here on the near side, along with John John Nelson in the slot. Binning looks the way of Nelson for a moment, now scrambles to his right, fires across the middle intended for Dominic Paris. The pass a little bit low. Would have been a tough catch for Paris had he been able to hang on. The clock would have run. Honestly, perhaps a fortuitous play there for Puget Sound as the clock stops with 38 seconds showing. Ball on the near side hash at their own 24. Yet again, another empty backfield with five wides. Three was right, two to his left for Mason Binning on second and 10. Deep coverage shown here by Willamette. Binning fires across the middle as a man. It's Liam Smith. Now close to the 40. They'll mark him down at the 38, and Puget Sound will call a timeout. Check that. We've got penalty markers in the backfield. Ball resting at the 36-yard line. Personal foul. Roughing the passer, number 44 on the defense. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run, first down. That's a costly penalty at the end of the play. Roughing the passer, moves the ball an additional 15 yards upfield. Ball now all the way across midfield. They'll set it down at the Willamette 47. Bidding takes the snap, looking left. Coming back for it is Dominic Paris. What's the call? Referees get together. Looks like they're saying no catch now. So pass incomplete intended for Dominic Paris. Fields, incomplete pass. Second down. 21 seconds left here in the first half. Two timeouts left for the loggers. Bearcats with all three. Not much use in burning those, of course. Second and 10 from the 47 of Willamette. Benning slots a pass between two defenders into the hands of Isaiah Jarenz. Another catch, and that might be double figure catches already on the day. Clock stopped for a moment at 14 seconds. And Benning looks like he'll clock it, and he will. Well, no time came off the clock. I would think at least one second should have ticked off. and maybe two. Well, the clock had stopped to move the chains at 14. It still sits at 14. They might get a clock reset here. The referees are talking about something over near the numbers on the far side of the field. We'll get the call here in just a moment. Clock operator. Please reset the game clock to 12 seconds. And there it is. So two seconds will in fact come off the clock. So now Puget Sound on second and 10. At the Bearcats 36, we'll have 12 seconds to operate with before the end of the half. Tommy Milton, Liam Smith, and Isaiah Jaren split wide to the left side. It's John John Nelson and Dominic Paris at the top of the formation. Near the far side boundary for Puget Sound. Binning takes the snap, three-step drop, steps up. Wobbly pass inside the 10, finds its way to Isaiah Jarenz. He's wrestled out of bounds at about the five-yard line. Where will they mark him down? Four seconds showing on the clock. Timeout, Puget Sound. This is their second charge timeout. Loggers will spend a timeout. They'll have it first in goal from their own three with four seconds left right after this.
four seconds left in the first half. Three yards from the end zone are the Puget Sound Loggers. Mason Binning lining up. Henry Hernandez, the single set back to his left in the shotgun, now settles in on the right side of Binning. Four wide, it's Isaiah Jurens here at the bottom of the formation. Already with 10 catches and two touchdowns. They look his way, pass sails behind Jurens. There are two seconds showing on the clock. Timeout, future sound. And the loggers will the burn third their final third timeout and the final timeout. Take it with him and come right back for the final play of the first half. Two seconds left in the first half. Second and goal for the Loggers. Time for just one more play, of course. Loggers out of timeouts. Hernandez, the single setback. To the left of Mason, bidding from the shotgun. Three wides to his right. John John Nelson on the left side of the formation. It's Jarens up top. Now Milton motions out. Binning looks to his right, pass toward the back of the end zone through the hands of Jurens, who was double teamed in the back of the end zone. And that will bring us to the end of the first half. The Loggers were knocking on the door. They had first and goal with 12 seconds left, in, with four seconds left in the first half. But they had time for two plays, but could not punch it in. And that will bring us to the halftime break. Our score at halftime, it's Peters out 26 and will lamb at 7. Enjoy the halftime break. We'll be back in about 15 minutes for the second half action. organizer and founder of both Indigenous Now and the Indigenous Peoples Day event. Pretty much making sure everything's going smoothly. <laughs> Indigenous Now, what we do is we advocate and we educate our communities, especially our um, Indigenous and Native students. So this is what we do in our community. We also um, do um, protests also to educate the people of Salem-Kaiser on all of our Native issues. This is a day to let, let people know that we are still here, we are still struggling, there's still a struggle in our, in our society that we still have to fight our Native issues regarding water, land. Um, we have speakers that will be speaking and we'll have some expedition dancing of our Native, of our native dances. There's also some performers that are from the indigenous um, areas of our brothers and sisters south of us. The Red Dress Project is the, um, the way of introducing our murdered and mi missing indigenous relatives. We want to bring awareness to this to let them know that this is real and it's painful for some of us because it's family. And always wanting to re remind people that we are human beings. Follow us on our Instagram and our Facebook pages for any updates or any actions that we're doing. Listen and observe. This is what we were taught when we were little. This is why we're so connected to the earth. So we want people to start listening and learning our histories and our issues so that they can understand the struggles that we've been going through all since 1492.
what seemed to be the entire community of Salem gathered at Marion Square Park on Saturday, September 16th to attend and to lend a helping hand at this year's Punks in the Park. Punks in the Park is Salem's fastest growing music and resource festival for at-risk youth. Along with band performances and resource booths, there was a free closet for youth, a Build-A-Punk station, free meals and free haircuts for youth, and so much more. We spoke with the founders of Punks with Purpose, the nonprofit that hosts Punks in the Park, about why and how it all started. I created Punks with Purpose because I was a youth experiencing homelessness. Um, unfortunately, my mom had a lot of mental issues and it wasn't very talked about and she didn't have the resources for it. So I wish I had somebody like me, so I became her. Youth were given informational pamphlets with a passport for the 60 plus resource booths that were there. They visited each booth to receive a stamp, and in the end, they got a prize. A fun way for the youth to learn about and to access the resources available for them within the community. I was a homeless youth here, and uh, what we're doing is uplifting their voices and making sure that they are heard and giving them an outlet. We get a lot of questions as to why we hold it at this park. Um, why not use Riverfront? Why not? You know, there's so many better places for this. It's because we want to meet them where they're at. Let's make a scary place into a fun place. Let's make good memories here instead of bad memories. What really resonated with me was the responses that we got last year. I had a mother come up to me and say, hey, I had a kid that always wanted to skate at this park. Look over there. He's doing it right now. Looking at all of the statistics and whatnot, it's like, wow, this is really needed here. The 2020 U.S. Census showed that for Marion and Polk Counties, 6,900 youth and young adults ages 13 to 24 were at risk of homelessness, and more than 1,500 were experiencing homelessness. It started with us in a coffee shop being like, hey, like, even if we have to barbecue, um, bring some resources in a boom box, like, we just need to get youth involved and be like, hey, we have elder punks that are just like you, that we survived, like, we're here to inspire you, we're here to love on you, we're here to support you, and then it turned into a concert, so here it is. <laughs> right now, our biggest impact is our resource event. We have 60 youth-based resource tables here, which is absolutely wild. You have to serve youth in order to be able to participate here. One resource, Heart to Souls, showed up to do their part as well. Heart to Souls uh, was founded by Micah Sisko and Brian McMullen with the mission to provide uh, local foster youth with a uh, new pair of shoes. We were able to uh, put together about 50 shoes for some of the local youth and uh, we have them all here ready to go. So um, yeah, they're going to be swinging by picking up their shoes. We have a ton of resources here that are youth focused, but a lot of these youth either don't know about it or are not allowed to reach out to these places. And that's the reason why we do something like this. Like, hey, we're going to a concert, right on. Hey, there's resources too. Some of the youth that we encounter don't have good days. This is a good day. We give them the stage. We let them tell us their story. We let people hear. The youth are smart. They know what they want. They know what they need. And they need us to listen more than anything. Our youth are very strong and they're very durable, but they shouldn't have to be. Like, we should be the ones that's empowering them and supporting them. I want the youth to be able to come in here and be like, oh man, what's this? And then leave knowing that they're empowered, supported, that they have community resources, that they can see somebody walking on the street. They see me on the street being like, hey, yo, you're the CMO. And like, know that they have a community around them that will guide them and like help them when they're in need. Punks with Purpose officially became a nonprofit as of this year with a mission to provide perspective on the challenges threatening our youth today. To see our community rising up for our youth is everything to me. There's a lot of organizations that are doing some awesome things for our youth. You can always hit us up at punkswithpurpose.org and we can, you know, direct you or guide you like, hey, I have this skill or I have this knowledge. I want to help, you know, how can I help? We can help direct you and guide you to maybe somewhere where you'll just click and you'll be like, this is great. Much love to our community because if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be able to do something this big and reach as many youth as we have. If we all come together, we can help them turn into really functional members in our community and keep this thing growing on and on. To find out more about Punks with Purpose, visit their website at punkswithpurpose.org and find them on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.
Today we are in the Smith Auditorium and we are celebrating the 32nd Willamette University Luau. <laughs> Yeah, it was really nice being able to see the audience out there today and the smiles on their faces. It was also lovely hearing their cheering. Um, but yeah, I really hope that they were able to take a piece of Hawaii with them today and hopefully share their aloha spirit with others as well. If you want to know more information about Hawaii Club at Willamette University, please follow our Instagram at WU underscore HI Club. What seemed to be the entire community of Salem gathered at Marion Square Park on Saturday, September 16th to attend and to lend a helping hand at this year's Punks in the Park. Punks in the Park is Salem's fastest growing music and resource festival for at-risk youth. Along with band performances and resource booths, there was a free closet for youth, a Build-A-Punk station, free meals and free haircuts for youth, and so much more. We spoke with the founders of Punks with Purpose, the nonprofit that hosts Punks in the Park, about why and how it all started. I created Punks with Purpose because I was a youth experiencing homelessness. Um, unfortunately, my mom had a lot of mental issues and it wasn't very talked about and she didn't have the resources for it. So I wish I had somebody like me, so I became her. Youth were given informational pamphlets with a passport for the 60 plus resource booths that were there. They visited each booth to receive a stamp and in the end, they got a prize. A fun way for the youth to learn about and to access the resources available for them within the community. I was a homeless youth here, and uh, what we're doing is uplifting their voices and making sure that they are heard and giving them an outlet. We get a lot of questions as to why we hold it at this park. Um, why not use Riverfront? Why not, you know, there's so many better places for this. It's because we want to meet them where they're at. Let's make a scary place into a fun place. Let's make good memories here instead of bad memories. What really resonated with me was the responses that we got last year. I had a mother come up to me and say, hey, I had a kid that always wanted to skate at this park. Look over there, he's doing it right now. Looking at all of the statistics and whatnot, it's like, wow, this is really needed here. The 2020 U.S. Census showed that for Marion and Polk counties, 6,900 youth and young adults ages 13 to 24 were at risk of homelessness, and more than 1,500 were experiencing homelessness. It started with us in a coffee shop being like, hey, like even if we have to barbecue, um, bring some resources and a boom box, like we just need to get youth involved and be like, hey, we have elder punks that are just like you, that we survived, like we're here to inspire you, we're here to love on you, we're here to support you, and then it turned into a concert, so here it is. <laughs> Right now, our biggest impact is our resource event. We have 60 youth-based resource tables here, which is absolutely wild. You have to serve youth in order to be able to participate here. One resource, Heart to Souls, showed up to do their part as well. Heart to Souls uh, was founded by Micah Sisko and Brian McMullen with the mission to provide uh, local foster youth with a uh, new pair of shoes. We were able to uh, put together about 50 shoes for some of the local youth and uh, we have them all here ready to go so um, yeah they're going to be swinging by picking up their shoes. We have a ton of resources here that are youth focused but a lot of these youth either don't know about it or are not allowed to reach out to these places and that's the reason why we do something like this like hey we're going to a concert right on hey there's resources too. Some of the youth that we encounter don't have good days this is a good day. We give them the stage, we let them tell us their story, we let people hear. The youth are smart, they know what they want, they know what they need, and they need us to listen more than anything. So our youth are very strong and they're very durable, but they shouldn't have to be, like we should be the ones that's empowering them and supporting them. I want the youth to be able to come in here 
and be like, oh man, what's this? And then leave knowing that they're empowered, supported, that they have community resources, that they can see somebody walking on the street, they see me on the street being like, hey, yo, you're the CMO, and like know that they have a community around them that will guide them and like help them when they're in need. Punks with Purpose officially became a nonprofit as of this year with a mission to provide perspective on the challenges threatening our youth today. To see our community rising up for our youth is everything to me. There's a lot of organizations that are doing some awesome things for our youth. You can always hit us up at punkswithpurpose.org and we can, you know, direct you or guide you like, hey, I have this skill or I have this knowledge. I want to help, you know, how can I help? We can help direct you and guide you to maybe somewhere where you'll just click and you'll be like, this is great. Much love to our community because if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be able to do something this big and reach as many youth as we have. If we all come together, we can help them turn into really functional members in our community and keep this thing growing on and on. To find out more about Punks with Purpose, visit their website at punkswithpurpose.org and find them on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Today we're celebrating the completion of Ed Davison Field, which is the first of a series of improvements that we're making at our youth sports complex, Pioneer Sports Park. So we're really excited to see the turf come out and everybody who's out here today. I played here when it was mud and dirt from all the way, when I was five years old all the way till now. And so to see this space and what it represents for our kids, um, the economic impact that it brings to our community in terms of kids and families coming in to play sports and do these things, it's just a huge investment into the kids in our community. If you want more information, you can visit cfcsalem.com. This has been about a five and a half year effort to come to today. Um, so it's so exciting to have this become a reality, this dream become a reality. Um, it's very significant and it really does speak to the value of this market. We started our first flight, we started flying in uh, April of 2021, April 28th of 2021. So we're coming up almost on two and a half years. We've carried over three million customers to date. We'll do about two and a half million just this year. So we're growing. We fly 16, we have a fleet of 16 Boeing 737 aircraft. We have two types. We have a, a smaller version which has 149 seats, a larger one that has 189 seats. For now, we're going to be flying the smaller airplane up here, but I expect at some point next year you'll start to see some of the 800s as well, which, you know, take uh, more people because we will need that those seats to handle all. And welcome back to McCullough Field. Halftime just about in the books here. Our score at the break. It's Puget Sound 26 and Willamette 7. Let's quickly run you through some of the numbers from that first half. UPS with a dominating ball. Time of possession advantage, 19 and a half minutes, just 10 and a half minutes for the Bearcats. They also racked up 19 first downs, did the loggers to just six for Willamette. Mason Binning having a spectacular afternoon here in Salem. 25 of 37 completions. 273 yards and three touchdowns piling up so many of those numbers is Isaiah Jaren on 17 targets already in this game he's already got 12 catches in this game for 133 yards and a pair of scores not too far behind him John John Nelson the very trusty slot receiver for this loggers team eight catches 78 yards of his own Liam Smith and Tommy Milton with a pair of catches. Liam Smith also spiking in that first half for Puget Sound. You know, let's give a lot of credit to Alex Rivera. The numbers aren't necessarily there, just five of 17 passing. He has completed those five passes for 111 yards and a touchdown. In fact, that catch to Trajan Clark, the first catch of the career for Trajan Clark amounts 
to six points for the Bearcats team. Their sole touchdown so far in this game on the defensive side of the ball. A couple of good performances being turned in already for either side. Ray Passe already with half a dozen tackles in this game. He's also got the only quarterback hurry in the game for the Bearcats. Dom Corrado, great to have him back. He's broken up a pass, has four tackles of his own. For the loggers, Steven Anaya leading the way with uh, three tackles. Also, well, there's a few guys with three tackles for the loggers. Steven Anaya, Asher Matsui, RJ Ma'ae, and Nick Derrick. Turnover free first half. Nary a fumble in the first half either. 30 minutes in the books, 30 yet to play. Let's also we'll bring you a couple of other scores from around the league here in just a moment. It is the Bearcats kicking off to Puget Sound here to open things up in the third quarter. Kickoff is away, backing up to about his own 18-yard line. As Dylan Graham works his way just shy of the 30. We'll mark him down after an 11-yard return. The loggers will open the second half, first and 10, from their own 29-yard line. Again, just a beautiful, pristine fall day here in Salem. One more home game in two weeks' time for the Bearcats. As Mason Binning in that familiar empty backfield wide, five wide formation, opening things up here in the third quarter. Binning, quick pass. Underneath, Liam Smith with the deception. Gain of six, maybe seven. No mark him down at 37. So a gain of eight, in fact, brings up second and two for the Loggers. They will open with pace here again. No huddle. Bidding quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Three wides to his right. He looks that way. Drops it off to the first option available to him. That's Isaiah Jerems. Nowhere to go. Tries to cut back toward the middle of the field. Might have lost a yard in the process. So great pursuit on the perimeter. Isaiah Jarens with little room to operate. Tried to improvise. Swing it back toward the middle of the field. All that running around just amounted to a gain of about half a yard. So it's third and a long one for the loggers in the opening moments here of the second half. Hernandez back on the field, stands to the left of Binning, who awaits the shotgun snap. Takes it, hands it off. A lot of space on the left side for Henry Hernandez. Out near midfield, crosses. Midfield and is eventually brought down on the far side of the field at the Willamette 35. Everybody just kind of sucked in on that one. And it created a lot of space in space for Henry Hernandez, by far his biggest run of the day. In fact, Mason Binning was the team's leading rusher in the first half. 17 yards to 16 for Hernandez. But a big 16-yard gain there, making a 21-yard gain. And the Loggers in business at the Bearcats 45. Quick pass to the near side. John John Nelson catch number nine inside the 40. Now wrapped up by a host. Of uh, Willamette defenders swarmed under here outside the numbers, inside the 40. They'll all come down about the 37. They will put the ball down there on the near side hash. Second and short for the loggers. They'll rotate some fresh personnel and they'll slow things down here. They'll huddle up. Isaiah Jarenz already knows what the play is. He's already set up, settled in here on the numbers on the near side of the field. Two wides to the left, Tommy Milton the tight end. Off the left tackle. Binning takes the shotgun snap. Takes the handoff to Hernandez, now drops it off for Jarenz. Bounces off one defender. Knocked out of bounds by Orion Woods. Clock will stop for a moment. While the chains move. And now the loggers will... Well, they'll slow things down yet again. They had a couple of wideouts already set up on the far side of the formation. So I thought they were picking up the pace. They'll slow it down for just a moment. Binning points at some defenders. Now takes the snap. Backs up, looks to pass. Right side has a man, Jarenz, in the end zone. Off the right hand of Isaiah Jarenz. Ball and 
coverage there from Manu Faleola. He was Witcher in step for step. He was right in his grill. Fantastic coverage. Brings up second and ten now for Puget Sound. Inside the Bearcats 30. Ball marked down at the Bearcats 28. Hernandez to the right of Benning. Nelson motions. They bubble it out for Jurens. As Nelson in front of him as his lead blocker fights his way to the 20. Stoned there. Actually, they'll mark him out at the 21. It's a gain of seven yards. We'll bring up third and a very manageable three for the Loggers. Oh, the Bearcats 21. On the hash near their side of the field. Loggers quickly break the huddle. Hernandez remains on the field. Three wides to the near side. Jarens at the top of the formation. And from the shotgun, Binning will operate. Takes the snap, it's a low one. Delayed handoff, Hernandez right up the middle inside the 10. Two defenders converge on him and knock him down at the eight. But a gain of 13 yards on a well-designed delayed run play. Loggers do a nice job spreading the field. Hernandez with room to operate in the second, even third level of that Bearcats defense. And it's first and goal for the Loggers on their opening drive of the second half. They lead it 26 to seven, as does Linfield at home against Pacific at halftime. Identical 26 to seven scores. It is Whitworth all over Pacific in the other game. Intended receiver, Jarens fell down. Two Willamette defenders converge on that pass, floating out toward the boundary in the end zone. Jarens just lying on his back, watching helplessly as a couple of Bearcat defenders went after that. Two DBs out there. Neither one of them was quite able to get there. And so it's second and goal now for Puget Sound. At the Bearcats' eight-yard line. Timeout called by the Bearcats, and we will be right back. Well, that is their first charge time out of the half. Loggers from the Bearcats eight yard line. The whole playbook likely open. Henry Hernandez has been very effective. They fake it to him here. Now rolling to his right, has a man wide open underneath. That is Tommy Milton. He will walk in on the fourth touchdown pass today from Mason Benning. Tommy Milton getting in on the action. That now the third different receiver to score a touchdown today for Puget Sound. They have opened up now a 32 to seven lead. After the Bearcats called timeout on defense. And once again, Puget Sound will look to go for two. It won't be too much of a shock to see <laughs> the Loggers stay away from their kicking game as much as possible today. They are without the services, I believe, of Jordi De La Torre. The one attempted extra point in this game did not look good. Now Binning on the two-point try. Has a man, it's Jarenz, goes up and reels it in with one hand. A hat is on the ground. Means one of their receivers went out of bounds in the back of the end zone. That was Nelson who ran off the field. But how about Jarenz is reaching up with one paw, reeling that thing in. And the two-point try is good. 34 to 7, Peter Sam. We'll be right back.
10 plays and 71 yards later, Puget Sound is back in the end zone on the opening drive for either team here in the third quarter. And now it's the Loggers with a very comfortable 34 to seven lead, but a ton of football left to play more than 25 minutes left in this game. 10, 19 left here in the third. Kickoff is away, line drive, squib kick, taking it about the 23 by Elijah Romero. Skips his way across the 40, brought down on the far side of the field at about the 45. No markers on the field, so once again, the Bearcats start their drive from very favorable position on the field. Loggers down their kicker today, Jordi De La Torre. He is their punter and kicker, has not been available for this contest. The one and only extra point attempted fell well short. So very likely we'll see the Loggers going forward on just about every fourth down. They were a perfect five of five on fourth down in the first half today. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if it is broke, which their kicking game is, wide open busted coverage is gonna result in the Bearcats coming right back for a massive 54 yard touchdown. It's Trajan Clark again. Two catches in his career. Both of them coming this afternoon. Both four touchdowns. Trajan Clark hits Paydard again on the 54 yard bomb from the hand of Alex Rivera. The loggers just caught napping. Trajan Clark had no one within 15 yards of him. And the Bearcats come right back. One play drive. And it amounts to the second touchdown on the day and in the career for Trajan Clark. Point after try is good for Camden Dernberger. He remains perfect on the season, 12 for 12. Our score now, Puget Sound 34, will land at 14. We'll be right back for the Bearcats kickoff. What a play dialed up by the Bearcats offense. One play drive, 54 yards. And Trajan Clark, now with two touchdowns on the day, came into this game still hunting his first catch as the Bearcats wide out. Now has two on the day, both of them hitting pay dirt. Trajan Clark having himself a day, and Alex Rivera getting more and more comfortable as the Bearcats starting quarterback. That kickoff fielded just across the 20 yard line. Dylan Graham with all kinds of space in front of him, finally brought down at about the 45 yard line. Graham with his best kickoff return of the day. A penalty marker here on the near side of the field resting on the Loggers 35 yard line. Penalties on kick returns usually, almost always in fact, Going against the return team. Let's see what the call is down on the field. Holding. Number 80 of Puget Sound. 10 yard penalty. First down. Well, the nice return for Dylan Graham. Largely wiped off the board. It's effectively a 19 yard penalty from where it, it was committed. Without it, UPS would have been set up at their own 45 instead. They'll take over first and 10 of their own 26. Timeout, Willamette. And the Bearcats their will second burn their second out of the timeout half. here of the second half very early. We'll be back in 30 seconds.
for Puget Sound, their own 26-yard line. Four wides to the left side of the field. Benning looks that way, dumps it off for Nelson, gets past one tackler, and it's brought down across the 30. Near the boundary, picks up about five, maybe six yards on that play. They will mark him down to the 32, so a six-yard gain. Second and four for the loggers who want to go quick. Three wide outs now rotate to the near side. Bidding empty backfield once again, two to the far, three to the near side of the formation. Bidding from the shotgun takes the snap. That's a low one, handles it well. Looks to his left, fires deep downfield, has Jurens. Reels it in, fights through the contact, and Isaiah Jurens will waltz into the end zone for a 68-yard logger touchdown. Isaiah Jarenz, it's no secret, he is the best player on the field and he is showing out today. And to the surprise of no one, the loggers will once again attempt a two-point conversion after the 68-yard touchdown for Isaiah Jarenz. Benning takes the snap, looks right now across the middle. Jaren's covered up, looking that way, but great coverage there. Isaiah Jaren's was bottled up completely. In the pass didn't have much of a chance, so the Bearcats do a nice job on the two-point conversion. But Jaren's continuing to wreck things here in Salem. He's got three touchdowns on the day and a ton of football yet to play. We'll be right back. Play 74 yard drive. Isaiah Jarenz with catch number 16 on the day. Good for 218 yards, and that was his third touchdown already in this game. Well on his way to a massive, just monstrous performance. He's already turned one in, but how many catches could Isaiah Jarenz end this afternoon with? Kickoff mishandled, finally scooped up at about the 20 yard line. Epifanio working his way east and west, able to get across the 35, he's across the 40. Ankle tackle near the 45 yard line. Epifanio mishandled the kickoff initially, able to recover, stayed composed back there. Worked his way left to right across the field. Finally tripped up, but not before. Throws a 26-yard return on the board and sets the Bearcats up yet again with excellent opening field position to begin their next drive. Alex Rivera finding Trajan Clark streaking down the middle of the field. One play, 54-yard drive for the Bearcats to open things up here in the second half. First time, first start for Alex Rivera. Six for 18. But two touchdowns and 165 yards. Wants to throw here. Works his way out of trouble. Making something out of nothing. Rivera doing it with his feet. Marked him down after a gain of two, but Walker's had him bottled up in the backfield. Rivera able to wriggle out of it. Second and eight now for Willamette. They're 47. To the near side, to the far side. This formation, Stephen Wright stands behind Rivera who looks to pass. Steps up. Evades another would-be tackler. Diving toward the boundary and toward the sticks. Let's see where they mark him out. Did he pick up the first down? They'll mark it right at the sticks. I believe they'll move here in just a moment. And they will. So Rivera doing it again. Taking off for the second time in two plays. 
The rest of the downs for the Bearcats this time in Loggers territory at their 45 yard line. Cahill Hooper on the field. Blitz off the near side. Rivera smells it. Fires downfield. Has a man. It's Clark again. Just out of reach. Oh, Trajan Clark was behind everyone in the Logger secondary. Oh, you're good, Trajan. If yeah, you're a Bearcat football fan, you've got to like what you've seen from Alex Rivera. His first start. The freshman from Arizona looking very poised. Doing a nice job. Spun out of trouble there. Kept his head downfield, his eyes just surveying the entire time. And the man just put it a little bit out of reach. Second and 10 for the Bearcats. Again from the Loggers, 45. Hooper, the tailback behind Rivera. Gets off the near side again. Rivera steps up. Fights his way through a couple of tackles. Brought down at the 41, gain of four, so third and a very manageable six yards to go. Let's go. For the Bearcats. A long six. It's the ball resting between the 41 and the 42. Here on the near side, Hatch. Clark and Epifanio in the slot. At the top of the formation, Brandon Johnson on the near side, Genovia. Rivera. Wants to fire it across the middle. Somehow gets away from the sack. Now throws downfield. Oh, had a man, but a flag flies in. Intended for Epifanio. Let's check the marker. Likely going against UPS. In fact, they're signaling that way. Pass interference. Defense, number 12. 15 yard penalty, first down. You know who gets credit for that pass interference play, though? Alex Rivera keeping the play alive in the backfield somehow did not get sacked for what would have been a large, substantial loss. Keeps the play alive once again, working his way out of trouble, keeping his eyes downfield, fires toward Epifanio. Pass interference on the loggers. Cooper on the carry. Great arm tackle. My goodness, what strength from Gunnar Jorgensen right there as he tackles Hooper while still being blocked along the line of scrimmage. Gunnar Jorgensen fighting through the block with one arm, reaches out and tackles Hooper with the other. Heck of a play for the defensive end for the Loggers. He's just a freshman. He keeps making plays like that. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with in Northwest Conference for quite some time. No gain on that play. Neil Hooper, the transfer from San Jose State, still on the field. Wide open receiver, Epifanio inside the five, leaps into the end zone, touchdown Bearcats! My goodness! Epifanio on the numbers just outside the 10, dances his way into the end zone with one last little leaping flourish at the goal line. <laughs> and the Bearcats with two touchdowns in two drives to open the second half. Dernberger's extra point is up and good. Bearcats trying to stay within shouting distance. Our score now 40 to 21, we'll be right back. Just eight and a half minutes into the second half. And 
already we've had four touchdowns scored <laughs> in eight and a half minutes of action here in the third quarter. Sternberger set to kick things off. Dylan Graham back at the 15. Line drive kick taken off a of bounce at about the 16 yard line by Dylan Graham. Across the 30. Brought down right at the 30, in fact. So. Two drives, two touchdowns for the Loggers, but the Bearcats up to the task so far here in quarter number three. Two drives, two touchdowns for the hometown squad wearing very non-traditional black jerseys today. Mason Binning, five touchdown passes on the day already. Looks to his right, fires to the flat, it's Jurens. Catch number 17. Works his way through an arm tackle. Brought down in space near the far side boundary. Gain of about six on that one. Make it, yeah, they will mark him right at the 36. So second and four upcoming for the Loggers. They lead 40 to 21. Winfield has scored again early against Pacific. They now lead it 32 to seven against the Boxers. 42 to 14, our other score. Another game coming up later on this evening. Benning takes the snap, pump fakes to his left, now steps forward. Starts to slide near the sticks. Did he get enough for the first down? A preliminary indication would have him picking up the first down and they will in fact move the chains. Benning's knee going down right at the 40 yard line. On the far side hash is where the ball is spotted. And the loggers will move with pace again, no huddle. Three wides to his right, two to his left. Blitz coming, they pick it up. Into the flat, it's Liam Smith. Can't get away from the first defender to him. Judah Ali'ifua with a lovely open field tackle. Trips up Smith after a gain of eight. Second in a short two, very short two. Ball just shy of the 49. Second and one and a half here for the Loggers. Another empty backfield look. Two to the right, three to the left. Binning takes the snap. Looks left in the direction of Isaiah Jurens, but it's out of his reach. 17 catches already for Isaiah Jurens in this one. He came, he came in today averaging 14 catches per contest over his last three games. One of two receivers in Division Three, averaging 10 catches a game. He'll be well over that number. Now he has number 18. Catches that one in the flat. Makes his way to the near side, far side boundary. In front of his own bench, able to pick up the first down. Jurens doing a lot of damage after the initial touch as well, and initial contact in many cases. As the first man to him couldn't make the tackle, before he was jockeyed out of the bounds. Now Benning with a fresh set of downs in Bearcats territory. Ball on the far side hash at the Willamette 41. Benning drops back to about midfield. Now rolls to his right. Has a man wide open. Liam Smith piling up some numbers. Came in with just seven catches on the season. But he's been very active in the passing attack for Puget Sound here today. That is catch number five for him, including a touchdown. And another first down now for the Loggers. Binning now over 400 yards passing. 413 to be exact. 36 of 51 and five touchdowns. Shotgun snap from his 35. Lots of time, rolls to his left, he's at the 30. Tucks and goes and steps out of bounds, just shy of the 20, they'll mark him out of the 21. You're seeing that elusiveness from Benning and that patience. He'll just sit back there for as long as it takes in many cases. Never panicked at all, Mason Benning. 
just keeps using the whole field, sees everything in front of him. And only when he has to does he scramble out of trouble. And more often than not today, it has resulted in decent little gains to keep drives alive. Second and four, takes the snap. Pressure coming. Spinning, pull his left, now back to his right. Floats a pass across the formation. That one dropped by Isaiah Jarenz. Uncharacteristic drop for number two. That was a very catchable ball. And Jarenz just let it go right through his hands. Getting another look at it right now. Look at all that time that Benning buys for himself back there. To his credit, Jarenz keeps the play alive with him. Very big third down here for the Loggers. However, we all know it's four downs. Four down territory for Puget Sound to be sure, no matter what happens here. Benning takes the snap. Pressure coming and Benning is dropped. Huge loss. Peyton Zamko untouched off the left side. Benning never saw him coming. And it is fourth and 15. And of course, the loggers will elect to go for it. On fourth and 15, Mason Benning lines up with a single setback. That's actually John John Nelson, the slot receiver, lined up in the backfield. Three lines to his left, little bunch formation. Benning takes the snap. Pocket collapses, slides to his right. Now takes off, gets inside the 20. Is it enough for the first down? I don't. They might mark him just shy of the line to gain. Where will they mark him down? I think he's short by about half a yard, and he is. Benning just needed to take an extra half step to pick up the first down, but he could not do it. Winds up stepping out of bounds a half yard shy of the line to gain. Getting a look at the replay. Forced out of bounds from behind by Ray Passe. He's had a big afternoon. He's been all over the field for this Bearcats defense. And that is the first unsuccessful attempt on fourth down this afternoon for the Loggers and the Bearcats after the turnover on downs. Back in their own territory, inside their own 20. Beautiful pass threaded across the middle. Reeled in Justin Genovia, the leading receiver for this Bearcats team so far this season. He's a little shaken up and will make his way off the field, but not before he picks up 17 yards on first down. He just had the wind knocked out of him as he comes over a little gingerly to the sidelines. The Bearcats without his services for this next play on first. So Brandon Johnson, the single receiver here to the near side. Up top, Elijah Romero on the field now. With Trajan Clark split out all the way wide. Handoff, Stephen Wright. Tries the left side. Nets a couple. Gain of three, they'll mark him down at the 38. So second and seven upcoming for the Bearcats. 40 to 21 our score. Clock is ticking here in the later stages, the waning moments really of the third quarter. Wildly entertaining quarter it has been. Rivera with a setback to either side of him. Takes the snap, drops back. It's a nice block. Works his way across the 40.
That is the end of the fourth, third quarter. Yep, I got it. Yep. So on fourth and three for the Bearcats on the first play of the fourth quarter, they will elect to keep the offense on the field. Rivera awaits the shotgun snap, takes it, fires across the middle. It's nearly picked and broken up. That pass broken up by Dylan Graham across the middle. Intended for Trajan Clark. And with that, the Bearcats will turn it over on downs. And now the Loggers begin this next drive in Bearcats territory. Set up on the Bearcats 42 yard line. Mason Binning. Already 53 pass attempts. Here comes 54. Looks downfield, and it's picked right into the awaiting hands of Chris Sheckles. Hauled out of bounds. Penalty flag flies in after the play. We might be tacking an extra curricular penalty at the end of this one. I think Binning was bothered in the backfield. That pass might have been deflected out of his hand. His arm was likely hit. That ball just floated up and was nowhere near its intended receiver. The pressure was bearing down on Benning in the backfield. During the return, personal foul, blindside block, number 51. The, return, the defense, 15 yard penalty, result will be first down, Willamette. Well, it was an illegal blindside block after the interception. Committed by the Bearcats. We're getting another look at the interception, the first turnover of the day for either team. Chris Sheckles, the only player near that ball. Well, the penalty will move the Bearcats back to their own 20. But new life for the Bearcats. They had turned it over on downs. Peter out on the first play of their ensuing drive. Turn it right back over to Willamette. Wide open here on the near side. Streaking down the sideline, Nick Goff into Puget Sound territory. Finally ridden out of bounds. Knocked out at about the, the Loggers 40 yard line. Well, how about that play call on first down? Nick Goff marked down at the 35. That flips the field and then some. A timeout now called timeout. by the Loggers. Future sound. It is their first charge time out of the half.
So first and 10 for the Bearcats at the Loggers 35 yard line. Rivera drops back to the 45, fires deep, has a man just out of the outstretched hands of Trajan Clark at the goal line. Would have been his third touchdown of the day. Instead, it's second and 10 for the Bearcats. From the near side hash mark. Yet to see Genovia back on the field for the Bearcats. Nick Goff and Elijah Romero getting a lot of his snaps here of late. Logger show blitz and they bring it. Picked up nicely. Great block from Steven Wright. Rivera slides to his left. Penalty marker coming behind the play as Rivera is chased out of bounds by Dylan Graham. When thrown in the area of holding. But again, I've been wrong so many times about calls. The last thing I want to do is get the Bearcats fans any further confused than I already usually do. There's no foul for legal block below the waist. So let's play okay. third down. Well, there you have it. The refs will get together and ultimately decide to pick up the hanky. Eight yard gain for Rivera on that scramble. Eventually knocked out of bounds on the far boundary. But it's third and two. Huge play for the Bearcats offense at the Loggers 27 yard line. Rivera hands it off, Stephen Wright. Might have gotten it. I think they're going to mark him about a yard shy. And they will. So it'll be fourth and a yard to go for the Bearcats. Coordinator signaling the play. Dudes in black all know what to do. Three wide to the left in formation. And at the bottom, it's Romero. Rivera drops back. Wants to pass. Wants it all. Wants Trajan Clark again. And it just does bounce out of his hands, off the turf, and out of the back of the end zone. Oh. Well, on the turnover on downs. The Loggers will once again take over. This time from their own 26 yard line. So very close to being a 40 to 27, 40 to 28 ball game. Clark just couldn't quite make the circus catch. Benning. This is Tommy Milton. The motion man with that catch, gain of seven. 33. Under 13 to play now in our contest. Willamette 0 and 4 in league play. Puget Sound 1 and 3. On a two game losing streak. Looking to end that today. Move their overall mark to 3 and 4. A lot of football left, but the Loggers with a comfortable 19 point lead. 12 and a half minutes to go. There goes Nelson. Hand off Henry Hernandez. Bottled up, stuffed, stoned, and thrown backwards. Bearcats up, they'd wrestled the ball away. That was La Alike, who had the football at the end of the play. Forward progress had already been stopped, according to the guys in black and white, after a one-yard gain. So it's third and two for the Loggers. Big play upcoming for this Bearcats defense. Been playing all day with three down linemen on the field. Some of the 
limitations to personnel on third down. Isaiah Jurens has the first and a couple more to spare. He's across the 40, marked out of the 41. Loggers will move the chains. Fresno downs up coming from their own 41. So the clock winds, runner 11 and a half to play now. Binning, that was his 56th pass attempt on the day. He's up to 441 yards passing. That was catch number 19, by the way, for Isaiah Jarenz, a season and career high. Hernandez makes a couple of men miss. Jukes to his right, works toward midfield. He's brought down after a gain of about seven yards. So a nice little chunk on first down for the loggers. Brings up second and short, just shy of midfield. Mark him at the 48. Have to get to the Bearcats 49 to move the chains again. Now the loggers want to juice the clock a bit. Ten and a half to play, 19 point lead. Jaren splits out to the near side this time, along with Liam Smith. 19 catches, 242 yards and three touchdowns for Isaiah Jarenz, product of Timberline High School in Lacey, Washington. Hernandez with a lot of space in front of him. Nice job of the beefy guys up front, creating some space. Big running lane to run through for Henry Hernandez. He's into Bearcats territory, and it will be first and 10 for Puget Sound at the Willamette 41. Isaiah Jarenz is not the only spectacular wideout to pass through this Puget Sound programming. Just a couple of years ago, a lot of fans in the Tacoma area will know all the name all too well. A.J. Johnson put a, a spectacular career together during his time at Puget Sound. You go back a few years to that, you can find a Salem product, actually. Adam Niffin, All-American wideout for this Puget Sound program. Put together a couple of massive Massive seasons for the Loggers. Back in the early 2010s, Adam Niffin, one of the best wideouts ever in the history of this program. He's a local kid, went to Sprague High School right down the street from here. So Isaiah Jarenz trading into that territory. Laid out first by Adam Niffin and then A.J. Johnson here in recent memory. Trends just the latest in a long line of very productive wideouts for this Loggers program. First and 10 for Puget Sound now at the Willamette 30. Looking left, it's John John Nelson. He takes the pass, works his way out of bounds on a penalty marker thrown by the referee. Right where Jarenz went out of, or excuse me, where Nelson went out of bounds. sort of very gingerly, casually pulled that marker out and sort of dropped it on the ground. And we'll get the call. Holding, offense number two, 10 yard penalty for V first down. Well, that's a costly penalty for the loggers. It'll move them back to the Willamette 39. So take away the catch for John John Nelson. He, by the way, has 11 catches on this day as well. So he and Jarenz came in with a combined 100 catches on the season. They've combined for 30 in this game between them. He dances around in the backfield for a moment. Skips back to the left of Mason Binning, takes the handoff, and he is stuffed. Walled off at the 40-yard line. I don't think he got out of the line of scrimmage. They will mark him for a loss of one. How about Vince Becerra playing the role of run stuffer right there? 
He read that well, shook off the block. Brought down the shifty moves of John John Nelson. And now it's second and 21 for Puget Sound. Back at the Bearcats, 40. Pinning with an empty backfield. Three wides, two was right, two to was left. Takes the snap, quick drop. Drops it off underneath. Nelson makes the first man miss. But holding on for dear life at the bottom of the pile, Manu Faleola. Does a great job of just hanging on to Nelson, not letting him get any further. And the 33 yard line. So a gain of seven brings up third and long for Puget Sound. Got to get to the 21 to move the sticks. So it's third and 12 here for the Loggers. Again, an empty backfield. Jaren's in the slot. Fitting looking that way pre-snap anyway. And here we go. Wants him. Catch number 20 for Jarenz. Fights his way toward the boundary, short of the first down. Of course, this will be four down territory for the Loggers. They marked him out of the 24. So this will be fourth down and three yards to go for Puget Sound. Cats defense desperately needs a stop here to give themselves any sort of shot. Come back to, in this game. They trail by 19 with exactly six minutes to play. Bending one last look over his shoulder at the sideline. Takes the snap, looks left, has Jurens, fights his way to the 20. Across, he fumbles the ball and it's recovered. Oh, it rolls out of bounds. It was nearly recovered by the Bearcats. Drenz with enough for the first down, lost the ball. So close to being the second turnover of the game. The referee's still talking about it. So hold everything at least for the moment. As it stands, it's a first down for the Loggers. Let's see if the referees see it differently. Ruling on the field is the fumble out of bounds. First down, Puget Sound. And in fact, that is where we're at. So Jarenz, this 20th catch of the day, nearly a costly one. He almost caught, he did cough it up, but the Bearcats unable to recover the fumble. It just squirts out of bounds. And now first and 10 in the red zone for Puget Sound from the Bearcats 16 yard line. Hernandez to the left of Binning. Takes the handoff. Red beautifully diving off the edge. Was that Dom Corrado flying in? I believe it was. Dom Corrado. Corrado playing nickel today. Great to have him back on the field. You can see on that left hand of his big club. He's got a hand injury, but able to play with the club on that left hand. Just a gain of one for Hernandez after the great tackle off the edge from Dom Corrado. So second and nine for the Loggers. Time becoming a huge factor, four and a half to play. Hernandez had some space for the moment, but it quickly closed, did the hole. As Ray Passe and others converge on Hernandez in a timeout, this is the final timeout. timeout. Willamette. Remember, Willamette it's had to burn two timeouts time out very early in this contest. So a timeout for the Bearcats here. We'll keep it here for just a moment because I want to talk about something pretty special that happened last week. Now, a lot of Willamette football fans are familiar with the incredible accomplishments of Liz Heaston, who 26 years ago became the first woman ever to score a point in a college football game. In fact, she kicked two extra points in a game against Linfield back on October 17th, 
of 1997. Well, how about this? Last weekend, nearly 26 years to the day, how about Lily Godwin of Puget Sound becoming the first woman to record a solo tackle in a college football game, coincidentally, also against Linfield last weekend. So congratulations to Lily Godwin. She's wearing number 28 for the Loggers. I've not seen her on the field here yet today, but just a massive milestone accomplishment. We'll do our best to see if she does get onto the field at some point during today's game. But Lily Godwin becoming the first woman to record a solo tackle in a college football game as Dom Corrado flies in, channeling his inner Lily Godwin right there. Making a spectacular tackle in the backfield. And that'll bring up fourth down for Puget Sound. It's kind of a cool deal to have some pretty milestone moments happening in the Northwest Conference. 26 years between them. By the way, two other women have scored points for the Bearcats since then, both Kaylin Sturton and Kyla Gordon. Sturton did it in 2017. Kyla Gordon did it in 2019. Both kicks extra points. So three women total have now scored points for the Willamette football program down through time. Binning takes the shotgun snap. And he is brought down, sacked, snowed under. First man to him, Michael Valtierra helping to finish things off. A.J. Conrad. And the Bearcats turn away. The loggers for the second consecutive time on fourth down. 327 left in this one, so a mountain to climb for the Bearcats. Good to see Gabe Herrera back on the field. He lines up in the pistol behind Rivera for the first snap of the next drive for Willamette. Huge week last week, kind of a forgotten man in the rotation today. Might have gotten shaken up in the first half. Rivera's pass sailed out of the reach of Trajan Clark. He's become a, his favorite target here in this game. like what we've seen here from Alex Rivera in this contest. He's done a nice job both with his arms, with his arm and his legs. On second down, low snap, handled well. Wants Dylan Johnson here on the near side, streaking outside the numbers. Close to the far near side boundary. So not the most efficient day for Alex Rivera, but he's done largely the best he can. Limited time in the pocket. He's shown good arm strength, good vision downfield. And with the Bearcat player down on the field, we'll step away for just a moment.
Hernandez, a couple of yards inside. Spills over the near side hash. Giving it to Lewis and Clark up in Portland, 63 to 21, the score there. Meanwhile, Linfield, it's a comfortable 42 to 14 lead on Pacific. Later on tonight, it's George Fox and Pacific Lutheran. That game will kick off at four o'clock. Timeout, Puget Sound. It is our second charge timeout of the half. So Whitworth and Linfield still on that crash course. Both will improve to 7-0 on the season and 5-0 in league play. They will meet on the final day of the regular season. Two weeks from today, will they both be undefeated? Looking ahead to action next week. Of course, the Bearcats are on the road at Pacific. That game kicks off at 4 o'clock in Forest Grove. There's two night games next week. Peter Sound is at Lewis and Clark. That game doesn't kick off until 6 p.m. So there are two combatants here on the field this afternoon. Willamette is at Pacific. Peter Sound is at Lewis and Clark. Linfield is at Pacific Lutheran, while Whitworth is home against George Fox. So barring what would be a huge upset in either of the Linfield or Whitworth games. Again, Linfield on the road at PLU. Whitworth hosting Fox in Spokane. Linfield and Whitworth very likely will be squaring off with identical 8-0 records, 6-0 in league play two weeks from today. The game that'll be. Of course, we are back home here for the final game of the regular season. Willamette will host Lewis and Clark after playing at Pacific next week. Well, let's definitely hope that Alex Rivera is okay. Nine for 27 passing today, but 254 yards and three touchdowns. Very comfortable, very confident. He's throwing the ball all over the field today. Really liked what we saw from him, both keeping plays alive with his feet, showed some good arm strength. For the loggers, we're getting our first look A couple fresh players on the field. However, Mason Binning remains on the field. He has piled up a spectacular day. Just a sparkling performance for number 13 for this Loggers team who now line up in victory formation. So 40 to 21 hour score. What a day it was here in Salem. It was a beautiful day. Just an absolutely gorgeous afternoon. After all the fireworks to open the scoring. In the third quarter, remember that we scored four touchdowns in the first eight and a half minutes of the third quarter. Fans, we have not had anyone score since then. We've been sitting on this 40 to 21 score for quite some time now. This one's going to play out with a scoreless fourth quarter. And although we had 28 points combined in the first eight and a half minutes of the first half, of the second half, excuse me, no points since then. 40 to 21 is where we've been for the last 22 minutes of football. And that is how our game will end here this afternoon. 
Final seconds ticking off, but the team's now making their way across the field with the victory. Puget Sound improves to three and four on the season. With the loss, Willamette now sits at one and seven on the year. We'll step away here for just a moment, but we will come right back and wrap things up for you right here on the Bearcat Network.